While a proposition has the three parts of subject, copula, and predicate, there are different kinds of propositions. A universal proposition is when the subject is taken according to the whole of its extension. This universality is usually signified by these words, all, every, no, none, etc. For example, all men must die. No man is almighty. Every creature had a beginning. These are universal propositions. We should avoid absolute statements which are questionable or merely used for hyperbole or overemphasis. A particular proposition is when the subject is not extended very far. The term and subject is limited and restrained in some way. It's usually signified by the words some, many, a few, there are, which, etc. For example, some birds can sing well. Few men are truly wise. A physical or natural universality is according to the order and common course of nature. A predicate agrees to all the subjects of that kind, though there may be some accidental exceptions. For example, all men use words to express their thoughts, yet there are some individuals who cannot speak, and so they are exempted. And we can generally say that all beasts have four feet, although we know there are some exceptions of animals who are maimed or have disformities. A collective universal is when the predicate belongs not to the individuals separately, but only to the whole collective idea. For example, all these apples will fill a bushel. All the hours of the night are sufficient for sleep. A distributive universal will allow the word all into every or into one, and by this means it is distinguished from a collective. For example, all men are mortal, every man is a sinner, etc. It is not a collective idea. The universality of a subject is often restrained by a part of the predicate. For example, all men learn wisdom by experience. The universal subject, all men, is limited to signify only those men who learn wisdom. Also in scripture, we find the doctrine that all men are justified by the righteousness of one, Romans 5.18. The restraint is also evident in moral universalities as well. For example, all the Dutch are good seamen. In other words, only the Dutch that are sailors are the good seamen. The universality of a term is many times restrained by the particular time, place, circumstances, etc. For example, the proposition, all the weavers went to present their petitions, is still limited by the weavers in that city. For example, in Mark 5.20, all men did marvel. It's still limited and restrained, in that particular case, limited to the circumstances of those who had heard about the miracles of Christ. We need to be aware of whether a speaker, writer, or ourselves use the universality of a term without explaining the restraints. A big cause of difficulty and ambiguity is the nature of people to magnify and make everything they say absolute. For example, he's always criticizing people. 